For this video, we are going to be discussing the order of operations. So the order of operations you should think of like a recipe for solving or for simplifying an expression. It's a set of steps that you want to follow in order to be able to solve an expression the way it's supposed to. So our first step on the order of operations is grouping symbols. So grouping symbols are things like parentheses, brackets, or the absolute value symbol. And we always want to work from the inside out. So for example, if I gave you in parentheses 7 plus, and then in brackets, 2 times 5, I want to start by going inside these brackets. I go inside my parentheses, and then inside the parentheses I have some brackets, so here's what I want, where I want to start with 2 times 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Then I have 7 plus 10, and 7 plus 10 is 17. So I want to start inside as f in the smallest set of grouping symbols and work my way out. After grouping symbols comes exponents. And exponents are things like x squared or the square root of a number. For example, like 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64 or the square root of 81 is 9. Now with the square root, one thing we want to think of is the square root can also be a grouping symbol. For example, if inside here I have the square root of 5 plus 4, before I could take the square root, I want to add 5 and 4 and I get the square root of 9, which is 3. So this radical symbol, that's what it's called, the radical, the square root symbol, is kind of both a grouping symbol and an exponent. We have to do what's inside of it first and then take the square root. After our exponents comes multiplication and division. And we want to make sure we're doing our multiplication and division moving from left to right. For example, if we saw something like um, 12 divided by 3 times 2. Well, I've got 12 divided by 3 here on the left. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then I multiply it by 2 to get 8. We want to move left to right. It is not, I repeat, it is not just do all the multiplication and then do the division. You want to do your multiplying and dividing left to right. And the same goes for adding and subtracting, okay, which is our last step. So if I gave you, for example, 9 minus 6 plus 4 minus 2 plus 8. I have to start and do 9 minus 6, which is 3. Then I add 4, which gives me 7. Subtract 2, which gives me 9. And then add 8, which gives me 17. Alright, so our multiplication and division and adding and subtracting, adding and subtracting, we want to do moving from left to right. So we're going to use these, we're going to use this order of operations as sort of a checklist as we simplify expressions. So here's example one. Right now I want you to pause the video, write down example one, and then we're going to go through it together. So in example one here we've got four times five plus six minus four, all of that squared plus three times five. So we've got a lot going on here. And what we're going to do is, I've got this little checklist for the order of operations over here. And I would suggest that you make yourself a checklist like this when you solve problems. And as we go through, we're just going to check things off. So our first step is grouping symbols. So I've got a set of parentheses right here. And then inside my parentheses, I have these brackets. And inside the brackets, I have 6 minus 4. So that's the first thing I want to do, is I want to simplify 6 minus 4 which gives me 2. I just went from 6 minus 4 and that from 6 minus 4 and that gave me 2. All right. Now, I think am I done with grouping symbols? Well, no. Nope. I've still got 5 plus 2 in here. So if I do my adding inside 5 plus 2, that gives me 7. So my 5 and 2 combined to get me 7. Alright, now, do I have any grouping symbols? 
Well, I still have parentheses, but these parentheses really just mean multiplying. And there's nothing to do inside of them, so I am done with grouping symbols. So my next step is to see if I have any exponents. And I do, I've got seven squared here. And the reason I show you this example is because whenever I have a two numbers next to each other in parentheses, there's multiplying going on. All right, there's multiplying here that we just don't see. And what we need to be careful is we have to do this exponent, seven squared, before we multiply by four. So we're gonna do seven squared. Seven squared is simply seven times seven, which is 49. So if we do seven squared, we get 49. So now we have four times 49 plus three times five. So we look, do we have any more exponents to do? We do not, so exponents are done. Next up, we've got multiplying and dividing. We wanna do our multiplication and division from left to right. All right, so right here we have four times 49, and we have three times five. Now because they're separated with this plus sign, I'm gonna do both of my multiplication problems at the same time. So four times 49, that gives me 96, and three times five, that gives me 15. So four times 49, 96, three times five, 15. I've done all of my multiplying and dividing, so that's crossed off. And finally, my last step is just to do my addition. 96 plus 15 gets me 11, which is my answer. So as you can see, all I did is I just went through the order of operations step by step making sure that I did all of the grouping symbols, then all of the exponents, then all of the multiplying and dividing, and then all, finally all of the adding and subtracting. We need to make sure we follow these steps in order to get the right answer. All right? Something I didn't know, did not mention, but I'm going to right now. If I had something like this, five plus two times six plus, or seven plus six, we're gonna do this as kind of a little bonus example. Here's a common mistake people make. They add five and two. But remember, when I've got a two next to this parentheses, there's multiplying going on here. So my first step is I go five plus two, inside the parentheses, seven plus six is 13. Now, I've got multiplying, two times 13. I have to do that multiplying first before I can add the five. So if I bring the five down, two plus 13 is 26. And adding these together, I get 31. All right, it's important that you remember that you have to do all of the multiplying and dividing before you can do any adding and subtracting. All right, let's look at our second example. So right now I'd like you to pause the video for a second, try this problem on your own, and then start it back up for us to go over together. So now that you've tried it, let's go through this problem. Now this one, looks a little different. I have 4 times 5 plus the square root of 64 plus 4 squared, all divided by 14 minus 2 plus 1. So, what we should look at here is even though they're not written, there are some grouping symbols here that are hidden. Anytime I have an expression divided by another expression, there are some secret grouping symbols around the numerator and the denominator. Basically, we just have to do everything up top and everything on the bottom, and our last step will be to divide top by bottom. So we're gonna go through this with the order of operations. Going grouping symbols. So remember, the top and the bottom are in their own grouping symbols. And then inside of those grouping symbols, we need to see, well, what have we got going on? Well, in here I've got two plus one, in its own set of parentheses. So two plus one gives me three. All right, next up, I wanna look up top and bottom. We've kind of finished off grouping there. And we wanna look top and bottom and see, do we have any exponents? Well, up top, we actually have two exponents. The square root of 64, that's an exponent, and four squared, that's another exponent. We're just gonna do both of them. Square root of 64 gives us eight, and four squared is four times four, which is 16. On the bottom, I don't have any exponents, so I just leave it alone. 
So this is where I'm at as of right now. And I go through and I say, all right, I'm now done with exponents. Now it's time to do multiplying and dividing. Um, in the denominator, I have no multiplying and dividing. In the numerator, I have four times five. Four times five gives us 20. So now we have 20 plus eight, and for some reason it's hard to see, but there is still a division bar here. All right, so I've done my multiplying and dividing on both the top and the bottom. And so now I need to do my adding and subtracting. So across the top, I've got 20 plus eight plus 16. 20 plus eight is 28, plus 16 gives me 44. And on the bottom, 14 minus three gives me 11. So now I've done all my adding and subtracting. And my very last step is going to be to do this division. We finally moved out of all the grouping symbols. My very last step is just going to be divide 14 by 11, and I get an answer of four. So the answer to this is four. So we just followed our order of operations. We did everything up top, everything on the bottom, and then our last step was to divide. So I'm going to leave you with this try it problem. It says simplify the square root of 25 plus 32 divided by eight, all of that squared plus nine. So you need to try this problem in your notes and bring it in to be checked in class tomorrow.